Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. I am going to talk a little bit about blending under glazes, which is basically, I don't know if you can see this, um, under glaze is basically clay with pigment in it. So it can be really thick and more um, opaque. And sometimes you can make it really translucent if you add more water to it. But it's one paint medium that I've used that is very different from all the other ones. Um, all the other paints that I've used and painted before. Um, oil paint is very slick and smooth and really easy to blend in together. And acrylic paint um, can be a little less so, um, depending on how quickly things dry. Um, and watercolors is even a whole different kind of technique around that as well, of blending colors and using things more translucent to build up opaqueness. Um, so with that background that I had of all the different other paint mediums, when I came to clay and started using underglazes to blend together for color, um, it became a little bit of a challenge. Um, just because it can get chalky, especially when your clay is really dry. Um, so in this video, I'd like to show you how to blend underglazes together um, to get that nice transition into colors and overlay. Um, I'm doing another piece again where it's gonna be multicolor background colors um, blended together. I'm, I'm simulating the skies down here in Florida, especially around sunset and sunrise. Anybody that lives down here knows that we have really vibrant skies, which one of the reasons I fell in love with this place. Um, so I'm going to interpret that onto this piece. Um, you'll also see um, a tree image on the wall that later I'll be incorporating into the design and there'll be another video on that. But for this video, I'm just gonna show how to blend colors together. So first things first is that you would want a clay piece that is, I guess, a little bit leather hard, but still pretty wet. Um, the wetness of the clay helps the underglaze blend in together. Um, easier because um, you're using the moisture within the base to help help that. Um, I always start with a base color overall to put it down on the base and this is one of my favorites. It's turquoise. It's been my color for many years and I just really love the color turquoise. Um, I had a teacher a while back ask me what association do I have with turquoise? And turquoise to me means love. So um, I really like to incorporate it into my pieces. Um, so to start, I'm gonna use a wide flat brush to start um, putting the turquoise down. I'm, I have water over here, I don't know if you can see that, so I may move it right here. So I use the water quite a lot in my blending. So. I will get my brush wet, get some underglaze on my brush, and I've added some water to my underglazes because last year kind of took a pause and a lot of my underglazes dried out. So um, this is really translucent already, but I'm just going to put a real quick layer down at first and I'm okay just putting it all over because I really want this to be my main um, color that all the other colors blend into. So I'm just going to apply that, try to get it smooth as I can so there's not a whole lot of streaks, but at this point it's not a big deal because it's really wet. Um, so I can go back over later on and make sure I smooth all that out. Get, get the edges. Also, as I'm brushing, I should have pointed that out when I was doing it earlier, if you hit the brush just right on the clay, it'll make indents. So I really try to use the side of the brush as much as I can 
so it doesn't change the texture of the clay on the outside so it doesn't have any um, divots or anything like that that will um, stay in place after it gets fired so I try to get it real smooth as I can just get that all over Get the base coat down. As I'm doing this too, I would love to hear comments from all of you if there is any specific videos that you would like me to do or any topics that you guys would like me to co cover. I get asked questions a lot of times of, you know, where I'm inspired, how I get inspired, you know, where do some of my concepts come from? So let me know and I will try to make videos around those and talk about those subjects. I'd love to hear from you. Um, so get this down. This turquoise is just a really nice, vibrant, I call blue, um, almost, that I really like to use a lot of times for the sky. Because it's really nice to blend some of the other colors in with. And since I work in stoneware or porcelain where the clay is just naturally more white that I use that uh, for its translucency behind some colors too where I incorporate my white that way by just using the color of the clay to shine through. bit down here. So also when I blend colors on my pieces, I like to have all my colors kind of laid out so I can kind of just hit them when I am ready. So this is a little tacky still, but starting to dry. I'm going to do a one more layer on this part up here just to get it a little bit more opaque. Okay. I'm gonna clean out my brush. Just tap it on a towel usually to get the excess water off. Um, and I'm going to start incorporating some of the lighter colors that I have. Um, let's see where I want to start. Um, I think I'm going to use this coral again. So this is a new color that I just um, integrated into my collection of underglazes. Um, it's a coral color. Um, it's a little thick, if you guys can see that in there. Um, it's a little thick, so it'll go on a little bit more opaque, which is fine at this point. Um, just grab a little bit of that on my brush. And I think I just want to, for just random areas where I work this in, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stand up too, sometimes it's easier to blend. So I'm just going to, I always do quick brush strokes, real light. This is how I teach my painting class too, regarding blending. Real light brush strokes, so you don't push too much color around where you may not want it. Um, there we go. So when it blends nice enough like that, you can't um, see solid lines of where you placed thunder glaze 
Um, and that's good. And this is um, also too, that it's, it's a process. I'm gonna move this back over. Um, it's a process too of adding un underglaze in small quantities and building up the color that you want and the opaqueness, especially when you're blending multiple colors. So I tend to go slow till I get a sense of where I want everything to be placed. Okay, it's pretty good for that for right now. Okay, clean up my brush. Um, I'm going to pull another color. I'm gonna get a little bit of orange and it's a nice light orange. I have little samples here. Um, I don't know if you can see that over here, but it's this orange, which is um, not as vibrant as the yellow that I have. So um, it'll give that nice burst of warm color without being too intense. So this one too, is more liquidy. So may pot cause a little bit of a challenge blending. We'll see what we can do here. Okay. So I'm going to add that just a little bit down here. If you can see how wet it is. <laughs> so I'm just going to let it sit so it can dry a little bit so I can go back and do it. Just going to spin it around, do a little bit more on the other side, and then come back to blend all that in. Clean up my brush, get a little bit more underglaze. Spin that back around, clean up my brush. I'm going to pat it dry so it's, the brush is still damp, so it still can move some of that underglaze. I'm going to use the side of my brush, real short, quick brush strokes to help blend that in a little bit. And the thing with blending, especially in a three-dimensional form, is that you want to make sure it blends smoothly all the way around the surface of the, the piece naturally so you don't get any sharp edges that don't make sense so again okay i'm also probably going to pull in a little bit of yellow where i put that orange just to kind of give it some variation in color to give it a little bit more dimension when it's completed and final. Just to add a little bit of pop there. And some up here too. Let's see. And too, with everything in art, um, balance is your friend. So trying to balance out where things are and placed. So it just gives the eye a natural um, flow to it. Spin that around. Get a little bit over here. Okay. Now, also, I want to mention with underglazes. Like I mentioned earlier, the last year I kind of let them dry out a little bit. So they were pretty much hard clay in these jars. So I re-wet them with water. I put water in them, let them sit for a while, and then mixed them up. Um, so that is a nice benefit of underglazes, is that they never get ruined, that you can always re- um, reapply water to them to use them again. Like I need a little bit yellow right up there. Um, 
So it's really nice compared to all the other um, like oil paints and acrylic paints. Watercolors are friendly like that as well. Um, but acrylics are not <laughs> at all. So it is, um, it is one of the things I really like about underglazes. I'm going to pull my main color that I started with, the turquoise, and reapply again. And I may go over and this may change, and that's okay. I just really need to build up the opaqueness so it can be a real nice color when it gets fired. I have noticed in my practice that if you don't put a really nice opaque color down with the underglazes, they can burn out and get real translucent that way as well. So making sure you have enough down is really helpful. So I apply a lot and a lot of layers. Um, this can be very time consuming in many ways, but, but fun at the same time. All right. As you can see, I'm going over some of the same spots. Probably showing up a little bit more solid on the video camera. I keep working this. And two, with underglazes, some, at some point too, it gets so wet that you have to let it dry a little bit and let it sit. So after I do this, I may have to do that again. We'll see where we're at. Again, I'm trying to smooth out all my brushstroke lines so they aren't in your face. And it looks like a natural background of the sky. All right. This side's pretty good. Let's move to this side. And too, at this stage when the clay is this wet, these edges tend to be a bit of a challenge to get it around because your brush wants to wipe all of that clay off uh, or all of the underglaze, which is partially clay. So that definitely has to get over um, underglaze over and over again, just to make sure it's opaque enough. Sometimes I just let big glob just sit there until it dries and then I can smooth it out later on too. I'll show that. All right. Go over some of these spots that I went over with other stuff. Got a little bit of clump of underglaze there. Try to move. going to let that sit for a little bit and then we'll come back to it.